Today, we have a story. A story about a man who wanted to achieve what we all want. That's right, folks. A Zelda movie made by Studio Deke. You know, that company who made that bad 80s Zelda cartoon that had Link saying stuff like, Excuse me, princess. Might as well have a Zelda CDI feature-length film. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy. Today, we have the story of Joe Cracker. Some could say this is the story of one of the greatest additions to the Zelda fandom. I'm not saying that, but one could. Before we begin, the person of interest featured in this internet lore, Joe Cracker, is not a bad person. He's not exactly an intelligent person, but I would not encourage harassing him in any way. He did dox himself in every internet forum he interacted in. He is just a passionate yet dumbfoundingly stupid, uh, I mean naive man. Today, I bring you the story of Joe Cracker and Zelda, the Light of Courage. Our story begins in the September of 2003. Yes, this is quite an old story in terms of internet history. 2003, a year where Maddox wasn't a laughing stock, a year that began on a Wednesday, a year when people still used AIM. Our tale also takes place on the IGN forums, a forum used to discuss video games or something. I don't know, my gaming expertise is, uh, I play solitaire. I'm a gamer girl. So on September 5th, 2003, Joe underscore Cracker posts in the Zelda section on IGN his idea to make a feature length film based on the bad 80s cartoon. My favorite part of this announcement was how he planned to get the movie made. What do you think is the best way to get a feature-length film based on a bad 80s cartoon? That's right, an online petition. He had a slightly positive but still mixed reception. For some strange reason, our Mr. Cracker responded with ego to people's critique. Around this time, an important player shows up by the username of The Spotlight. Spotlight was highly critical of Joe's dream, where he also inquired about his age, which four members then learned that to be 19 years old. Joe also revealed that he somehow plans to get Peter Jackson to direct his film, but forum commenters doubted his ability to have such connections. One commenter replied, I can name one major difference between Peter Jackson and you. Peter Jackson went to film school. He studied film and knew how to be a director. Did you ever go to film school? No, I didn't think so. You're really 19 years old? I'm not trying to flame you, but I wrote better stories in seventh grade. On September 15th, Joe revealed the plot of his script. He wrote, and I quote, and I will read this how he spells. The writing process went an amazing turn when I wrote a scene where Link and Zelda had completed level 2 dungeon Naru's temple. Then they were attacks by at least one eighth of Ganon's army. Then I had Prince Fasad ride into the battle and the story goes, quote, as Prince Fasad, like a man possessed, Link and Zelda rode as fast as they could to the land of Dok Ock. There is also another line in the story where Ian, the stagecoach driver, saw Fasad fighting and says, I got two words for that guy, DK. Funny, ain't it? He then detailed his dungeon lineup. He concluded this post with the line, Also, TLOC will answer the biggest question for all the fans of the TV show. Will Link finally score with Zelda? At this point, people started accusing Joe of being a joke account. But he assured everyone that he was 100% real, that his script was 100% real, and that Britney Spears would also be playing Goddess Naru. Some other interesting casting choices included Whoopi Goldberg as Impa, Bruce Willis as Link's father, Sally Field as Link's mother, and Carmen Electra as Princess Rudo. On September 18th, user Spotlight got frustrated with how moronic Joe was and posted a long rant on how Joe could not format his scripts properly. The two begin to bicker back and forth. After a bit of time, the Spotlight sort of agrees to help Joe iron out his screenplay, admitting that he is a recent film school graduate with dreams to write his own Zelda screenplay. With September ending, and with the help of the spotlight, we now enter the second month in the saga. It's October 2003. On around October 12, 2003, Joe Cracker released a trailer to his TLOC film on his now defunct website, geocities.com slash Zelda underscore TLOC 963 slash index dot HTML. The reaction to this trailer was rather interesting. A new and important player in the story made an appearance during this time, a person going by the username Sexual Burger King, or Burger for short. This person described the trailer as absolute poetry and reacted to it in an obvious mocking way, even even in text form, the sarcasm of his post was apparent. Another thing to take note of is at the 
beginning of this thread. From the start, Joe reacted to any criticism by claiming they are violating his, quote, no slandering policy. After several people tried to tell him he is misusing the term, on October 13th, Joe clarifies what he means and he writes, I think I must address the issue of my no slander policy. On this thread, do not say the following. One, no way, you are as old as you say you are. Two, you are an embarrassment. Three, you don't have a chance. Four, your idea will never work. Five, I'm against the idea. Six, last but not least, your mama. If you have written up top, I won't get you for slander. One, this is my opinion. Two, sorry to say this. Otherwise, if you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. Of course, Joe was not a moderator, so the thread is still full of people quote-unquote slandering him. In between this time and mid-November 2003, Joe sporadically posted updates for a petition to get his film made. Some people openly told him this was a waste of effort, while others egged him on to laugh at him. But Joe was not deterred. There was silence on the forums between November 12th and November 18th, when Joe returns with an important announcement about his script. It read, quote, They said I couldn't do it. They said I'd never finish. They all thought I was some cracker gone bad. They laughed at me. They laughed at me. They laughed at me. Now I am the one laughing. I am the one making people crack a size. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll moo. The screenplay is finished. The rest of November brought more posts from Joe, updating loyal readers of petition signatures, and a back and forth between him and Spotlight concerning who will write what. Spotlight finally agreed to write the dungeon scenes. Throughout the month of December, Joe's ego grew with some of the false attention from the likes of Sexual Burger King. The genuine attention of the Spotlight and other users giving him attention, trying to tell him how ridiculous his idea was. Joe began to make demands of the Spotlight, who unlike Joe, seemed to actually have a grasp on film production. Despite the Spotlight's annoyance with Joe's demands, he was still compliant during this time. He told readers he didn't receive much encouragement growing up and wished to help others. A noble cause, Mr. Spotlight. 2000 ends with a wishing of holiday joy. The month of January 2004 had very little conversation. Various people commented critiquing the terrible thread, but this had little effect on Joe's desire to get his film made. Despite the constant criticism from other forum users, on February 18th, 2004, Joe proudly wrote that he now has his script in a film grad's hands, though the spotlight responded with doubt that he can do little more than improve the formatting. Months came and went, with little other than the regular conversation I previously established. The spotlight was missing in action during this time. His last post was made on March 12th. On May 20th, Joe Cracker expressed concern over the disappearance of the Spotlight, which finally elicited a response from the Spotlight that same day. Spotlight expressed that from here on out, he wanted to distance himself from the direction this was being taken, and expressed frustration with the script and how it blends the poorly made 80s cartoon and the N64 games. And despite nobody else seeing the script, we get an idea of how poor at writing Joe is, by the Spotlight adding in, quote, Secondly, your wording is very vague. If I were to complete your sentences, it would be like as if I was doing all the real work. I don't know what you're thinking when you wrote it, but it's hard for me to believe that you ever proofread it. This does not affect Joe Cracker, who then asks Spotlight to email him with what he's written. And after another annoyed response from the Spotlight, Joe announces that on June 11th, he will have an open forum where he will be answering questions from followers of TLOC. After a few more exasperated responses to Joe Cracker's delusions and annoyance with Joe thinking Zelda is Deeks properly, the spotlight disappears again. June 11th arrived, the day of Joe's live chat. Joe excitedly posted an hour and a half prior to the chat saying, This will indeed be surprising. At 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, with is like one hour and 30 minutes away, I am now preparing for my live chat. It is indeed made Q&A, and a full recap will be posted on my website as soon as possible. My secret announcement will be so cool that the only thing that would top it would be to say that Deke Entertainment has finally decided to make the movie. But that hasn't happened yet. This will indeed get us closer than ever before. Finally, the live chat began, and Joe posted, The live chat has just begun, and no one is there. What's going on? He posted again, saying, So far, it has been an hour since I started the live chat. What is going on out there? It's turning into a huge failure. One final comment on the failed event for Joe reads, The chat ended at 10 p.m., and all you players were just 100% no-shows. Which meant Joe talked to himself in a chat room for two hours. Perhaps this was a fluke. Perhaps the spotlight was out for vengeance, for being bossed around by Joe. Because surely people took Joe's project very seriously. Joe's enthusiasm was not ruined by this failure. Instead, he blamed it on the death of Ronald Reagan. Makes sense. 
Joe also announced his Network54.com powered forum on that same day. However, two days passed and no one had said anything on that forum. Posts continued on as usual throughout June. Joe Cracker being delusional and fascinated onlookers, either pretending to ironically be fans of Joe or telling him to quit or telling him that he's stupid. On June 28th, Joe makes a post still trying to get into contact with the spotlight. Spotlight is still missing. With the arrival of July comes a new plan for our Mr. Cracker. He planned to sell the NES game of Where's Waldo on eBay to fund his film. Yes, that's right, a game surely high on demand. Forum posters doubted if he could even get $5 for it. No one bidded on it. Surprise, surprise. I rented that game once at a local VHS rental and it sucked. The book was better. Finally, the spotlight made a reappearance on July 13th, 2004, where he said he does not support Joe. The back and forth arguing between Joe and the spotlight continued, while other forum members attempted to educate Joe that Deke did not own licensing for Zelda. Same old song and dance, an effort that many had tried over the lifetime of this thread. Another important member in this story makes their first appearance, Salius underscore 18, with their first comment on the thread on 7-18-2004. Just remember them as we proceed further. July 21st, the absolute state of done the spotlight felt was elaborated in a response to another user's comment addressing how lucky Joe was that the spotlight gave him any help. Spotlight stated, I started off offering my help and now Joe is relying on me to turn it into golden crap. I still don't think he understands that I'm not going to waste my time on it until after he sends me a better detailed story. I originally thought that all I would have to do is add transitions and clean up the grammar, but no. Now he insists that I play Majora's Mask just so I know what Uris are. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. I'm sorry, but I'm too busy at the moment to play any games. Sounds to me like he has totally immersed himself into this world where he is going to make this Zelda movie and nothing is going to stop him. It's going to really hurt when the world slaps him in the face. Joe responded to this by saying that Virez were not in Majora's Mask and that he would send better details. On July 22nd, the spotlight loses it and was done with Joe. His post was filled with censored profanity about Joe's idiocy, concluding his post with, This is really bleeped up because you can't read what I ask you. Every time I read another of your responses, I lose more faith in your ability to do anything with words. Finally, on July 23rd, the spotlight throws his towel in saying, Joe, due to your inconsistencies and lack of a good response, don't ask me for anything anymore. The evidence of Joe's unearned ego showed its ugly, fat head once again when he responded to the spotlight's complaints saying, Spotlight is becoming nothing but a big complainer and no employer wants a complainer working for them. Anymore. That's right, folks. Joe Cracker thinks some guy on IGN offering him for free help is an employee. What a loon. In between the bickering between Joe and Spotlight, a more detailed plot to the film was revealed by Joe who says, TLC is a story. The story is based seven years after the events of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Ganon is still alive and he is out hunting for Majora's Mask. Link has to find the three keys that will transform the magical sword into the Master Sword. Link has been having these nightmares for the past year and he has lost so much sleep that it all takes all of his energy to fight a small amount of creatures. Then on July 24th, Joe informed readers that Spotlight and him had made a deal. Spotlight elaborated on that deal, saying that he will still help Joe and that all Joe has to do is remove all references of the 80s TV show. Joe also removed his petition due to Spotlight having problems with it. The board went silent for the rest of July after this. Joe broke that silence on August 4th, announcing that in five days he will be opening a Joe Cracker forum. Also at this time, Celius begins making fan art for Joe's movie. This is obviously a joke. Getting nothing done in August due to writer's block, Joe posted on the 27th to notify readers that he had a new item up for sale on eBay. It was a reel of the Shrek 2 movie trailer. He received mockery and criticism due to this. Nice one, Joe. Folks, he isn't a troll. After reading everything and watching all of his vlogs, everything I could find from this guy from 2003, he isn't a troll. On August 31st, we get another update with Joe writing, Well, players, where's the 411 on the TLOC screenplay? The screenplay has seven acts in it. Right now, all the rewrites on Act 1 are finished, and I am now in the middle of Act 2. He also tells readers that someone took his eBay auction down and told him to shove his trailer up his you-know-what, but in retaliation, he would be selling an autographed comedy CD called Cracking Up Volume 1. It's all about the revenge. I wish I could get a copy of this. Joe, if you're out there, please, please contact me. Yeah, I'll uh, let you know.
We are now in September 2004, a whole year into this adventure. On September 27th, Joe informed the thread that he sold his CD very quickly and was selling another copy for funding. No doubt it was like Sexual Burger King or Celius. On September 29th, Celius brings up an important topic, the score for Joe's film, and inquires about who the composer will be. Joe responded that he wants to use existing Zelda music, but wants an actual composer doing his or her own revisions of the themes. On October 2nd, 2004, yes, the thread is still going, another ironic thread regular, Orkyux, I don't know how to say that. We will just call her Orc for short. I offered up her own help as assistant productions consultant on the 3rd. Joe responded with his progress and also accepted her offer. Celius also asks where Spotlight is, and Joe responded with, quote, I don't know where Spotlight is doing right now, but I want to know that TLOC rewrites are almost finished. All you have to do is correct a few more spelling errors and I'll be finished. Then all TLOC updates might be given to you guys by Spotlight, but I will maintain the TLOC. LOC website, as well as websites to other movies I will be making with 963 Productions. 963 Productions had been previously established as his production company. A happy announcement is made by Joe on October 18th. He informs forum goers that the rewrites are completed and he now needed Spotlight, who again is missing still to finish it. An important change in roles happens on October 19th. After some back and forth between Joe and Celius about music, Celius took on a new role that will continue over the years of producing TLOC as a music composer. Thank the Lord, the song was archived. The song was honestly not a terrible song, considering the joking manner Celius was taking on this whole ordeal. The forum for the next days are back and forth about getting in contact with Peter Jackson to direct the film, which never happened. The days of October continue to go by with sexual Burger King and Celius continuously contributing original work for Joe's movie, including art and music. We got another update from Joe on November 1st, 2004, that he was putting TLC on the shelf while he waits for Spotlight, and detailed readers on other projects that I don't really care about. It is common of Joe to use this forum to promote other equally bad ideas. Joe continued to inquire where Spotlight was, and a response to this I think sums up Joe's character quite well. User Raller wrote, Whenever I'm losing faith, I usually ask myself, what would Joe do? Deny there's a problem, make wild proposals, and wait for Spotlight to respond. And wait and wait. On the 5th, user Orc gave Joe a harsh dose of reality that the spotlight is gone and that he needed to give the people what they wanted. She writes, yeah, and spotlight? Give it up. He's gone. And soon we'll all be gone too. Sadly but true, I find myself coming here to see Burger's posters and hear Celius' music. Maybe we should team up with our talents and nix the one true hindrance in getting a Zelda movie made. A real turn of events happened the very next day when Celius posted something rather... Well, we'll say devastating to the production of TLOC. They wrote, I was browsing the internet and by sheer happenstance, I found another Zelda movie site. They then linked to a website, geocities.com slash beacon of courage, a very similar title to Joe's movie idea. Joe was devastated by this news, saying this author named Glenn Judicus ripped him off and then Joe proceeds to try to reach out to John Grust, an animation professional at Deke, via post on IGM as it seemed like Glenn claimed to have been in contact with him. He asked Mr. Grust, who totally reads the IGN forums, to not have contact with Glenn. The users began to mock Joe, telling him that they were not sure who to trust at this point, him or Glenn. Before you guys get confused, this is the work of Sexual Burger King, Celius, and Orc fucking with Joe. The forum users in this arc decided to name this other author Cheese, so they could quite geniusly refer to everything as Cheese and Crackers. Cracker came into contact with Cheese on November 10th and informed readers that Cheese refused to admit to stealing from him. He also gave the MIA Spotlight an ultimatum, saying that tomorrow was his deadline for the script. I'm sure Spotlight saw that. On the 13th, Joe posted an email received from Cheese, which said, Do you have a zero tolerance rule for people who iron your material too? Seriously though, lean to spell. I'm getting sick of your bitching. All I can tell you is Monday, I'm taking my material to John and you better not get in my way. Don't you have anything better to do than to copy my ideas? It's kind of sad, man. Users at this time kept begging Joe to post the whole script. Joe would not comply to this demand. On November 15th came more news. John Grust had seemed to take a notice, and Cheese emailed Cracker about this. 
writing. Okay, now I've taken the liberty of reading your little message board recently, so I know there's no Mr. 963, okay? This is a pretty sad attempt, buddy. I mean, you're trying to play good cop, bad cop with yourself. Anyways, it looks like my meeting with John might be pushed back a few days. So it looks like I might have to put up with this a bit longer, but please leave me alone. It's getting annoying. If you want to make a movie so bad, go write something. Don't crash my party just because you're jealous. Look, if I sign the deal with John and I need an assistant writer for something, maybe I'll let you know. Signed, Glenn. And with that, Joe said he'll start supporting Cheese if he tells Crust the truth. But more good news arrived on November 19th when username I don't know how to pronounce this, Valley Kendi discovered John Grust totally had a legitimate blog spot. Now Joe could get into contact with John. And when I say legitimate, it's totally not orc, totally. Joe posted on the blog three days later to inform John of the writing thief. And guess what, folks? On November 30th, 2004, Joe had the greatest announcement. The beacon of light was dead and Grust had hired him. Grust emailed to Joe, read, Hey Robert, sorry it took me so long to get back to you. Had a few busy days there. I read your script. I believe you. I fired that Glenn character and had some choice words with him. Legal action is a possibility. I'm not sure what Deke wants to do yet, but you're hired. We'll get it figured out. I really love the script, man. We are now into December, a wintry month, a month of victory for Joe. What's next in this incredible story? An update happened on the 16th, with Joe saying Grust had no major updates, as he is just doing a lot of boring meetings. To which Celius responded, Cracker, the joke is over, go away. The rest of the crew all agreed with the sentiment that this was the end of the story, but it wasn't. Excuse me. There was no updates for the rest of the month of December, but Joe came back January 3rd, 2005 with an announcement about an email from John Grust. TLC was in pre-production now. Grust also told Joe not to listen to Celius, and this was not a joke. With this news, it seemed everyone else was back on Joe's side. On January 7th, we got another update from Grust via Joe. He writes, Deke CEO, loved the presentation, but John told me that Deke has rejected TLOC due to possible bankruptcy after many failed attempts on different TV shows. But this is not new to Deke. Things have been like that for two decades. John also told Joe to never contact him again. So what is the best way to deal with this defeat? Well, Celius came up with the best plan ever. Get him, Orc, Sir Louis, or Rattler, all prominent ironic fans who created fan works for TLOC, to get a film done. Joe does not address this suggestion. The TLOC fan crew began alluding openly that they were behind everything, but of course Joe does not recognize their hints. Joe also disappeared during this time, after a long, unintelligible rant about his father, with readers wondering where he went. He reappeared on the 26th, but just gave more nonsense and no updates. Joe then got a new email on the 27th from Grust, angered that someone forged his signature on Joe's petition, which claimed he was working with Steve Martin, which he says he was not. John demands that Joe post this email to IGN, and if he ever wants this film to be made, he has to keep his fan base strong. The email concluded with, Robert, I strongly urge you to write up a proposal to the CEO of Deke outlining your strategy to get the Light of Courage produced. There were no further updates in the original 17-page thread on IGN, as it got locked. The last post was made on February 1st, but if this was the end of the story, would I have made this video? We are only beginning, kids. A new thread was started February 3rd, where Joe posted, This is the second version of an older thread, in which I saw no reason for it to be locked. It was not spam. He linked the old locked thread and talked about things we already knew about from the old thread. He also spelled characters, characters. New readers came in with confusion, while regulars also returned with excitement. A new important user made their appearance here, called TLOC underscore fan. They came in to express their love for TLOC. They are important and remember them. We get a new New update from Joe on the state of the animation on February 8th, where he stated he sent Grust four MP4 files of him quoting lines from the script. He said John had his own team of animators working on them now, and he might be willing to show them to him once he had a rough look. Not much happened in this revamped board, and it got locked on page one. A new thread was started a whole month later, on March 6th, by Joe. He wrote in the OP, I don't think it's a secret that a Legend of Zelda movie is being made. I came up with a story for it. I co-wrote the script, and I have found a filmmaker to direct it, John Grust. He also added in an update saying that Grust has requested that Joe allowed the IGM forums to cover, and I quote, all the latest development of one of the most anticipated films of all time. A very important thing happened in this thread. Celius posted a test animation by Grust 
So let's take a look at this short animation by Deke, by Totally Deke, it's Totally Deke. The clip is only 42 seconds, so I will share it to you in the entirety. Link, what is that stealthful wearing? Don't worry, princess. It's just a mask. I am more than just a mask, boy. Much, much more. Stand aside, princess. This mask stealth force is going back to Gen. Ha ha ha! Your powers are no match for me, boy! Looks like we're in trouble, princess. All we can do is run. If randomly shifting lazy eyes doesn't scream professional animation, I'm not sure what does. This was totally not sexual Burger King, Celius, and the like fucking with Joe. This is professionalism. The thread was locked quickly after this important part in the arc. Joe started a new thread on April 4th and informed the eager followers of the saga that they need to ready to crack a scythe and that the film was about to be cancelled, and I quote, John Drust believes strongly that the Zelda move should be advertised here on IGM.com, so now it is going to be back on track soon enough. I might have to let you know that 963 Productions will also be providing additional funding if John deems necessary. Username Catzoid addressed the totally awesome animation from earlier saying, Your movie is the clip we've seen with the Majora's Mask, Link with the rolling eyes and the changing voice, and Zelda, right? That's not what it's actually going to look like, right? To which Joe says that it was just a test animation, showing that he still hadn't caught on to the joke. An important post from GannonBand.com was posted by Joe on April 15th. The post in question basically detailed what was really going on, that there was no John Grust, and it's just the form regulars fucking with Joe, that this was all just a prank bro, to make fun of the stupid, now 21-year-old Joe Cracker. Joe Cracker doesn't really acknowledge what went on in that message, still too slow to know what was going on, when it was blatantly in his face. Continuing to believe John Grust was totally working on the movie, and it was business back to normal. On 420, we hear news via Grust correspondence with Joe that the second animation was almost done, and there was a tease with a bit of the content. Joe brought up news once more on the 25th, telling readers that the second animation will be different and improved via John Grust. Days and days passed, with no updates. Posters began to feel impatient, and on May 6, Joe clarified that he only shares important updates and does not share things he deemed as private issues between an actor and his director. On June 8th, he clarifies further that there were five voice actors in the next part, and there were problems with copyright mainly because of certain legal issues with the voice actors. Posters honestly didn't really care about this. Later, he revealed Nicole Kidman was the voice actress that they had legal issues with. <laughs> Totally believable, Joe. Oh, and she was the voice of Princess Rudo. The last post on this new thread was on May 30th, and then it got locked again. A new thread was posted the very next day by Mr. Cracker. Joe stated that from here on out, he will not be posting about TLOC anymore, and this post will be his last post. That isn't true, but whatever. The reason he isn't talking about it anymore? Threads kept getting locked. People again mock him, and then randomly the next day, he posted his face for everyone to see. Okay. June is a month that brought in luck, because on the first of the month, Joe eagerly posted the second animation test. The second animation is a scene from the original script, and is over two minutes long. In the animation, we see Link, Zelda, some guy named Ian in a Hawaiian shirt, the king, and Princess Rudo. They are watching some kind of game excitedly. The voice actors take this completely serious. Wow. Did you see that? Yeah. These games are pretty exciting. And I'm not sure, but I think Princess Rudo is indeed voiced by Nicole Kidman. <laughs> there are no credits involved, but I'm pretty sure Joe is voice acting Ian, or someone is mocking him. I've seen better battles with beetles in a bottle. As teased earlier from Joe, Tingle made an appearance. Coming right, Prince! It concludes with a fever dream-like situation and ends with a line from Ian that makes fun of Joe Cracker. Man. This guy has more mouth than Robert McGee. 
it was a definitely more complicated video than the first two animation tests and was purposely extremely bad to mock Joe Cracker's idiocy. Now, how did Joe take this? Surely by now he has to know Grust is not actually involved, that he is just the butt of some people's jokes? No, I mean he excitedly posted it to his own website. The reception from the readers was negative, except for of course Berger, Ork, and Celius, and the others. Joe responded to the mockery saying, For all of you who are saying that this second one was a joke, I would like for you to know that some, almost all of this comic relief stuff and slapstick humor was not in the script. He only has one major complaint. Guess what it is? His major complaint is, uh, Link needs to have dark hair. He also then rambled on about trying to get a TLOC game, but whatever. There is no getting through this guy's stupid armor. Celius responds to this moronic post with, ha ha ha. Whatever, dude. This animation is great and obviously a mockery. If you can't see that, then you're beyond hope. Joe is beyond hope. <laughs> Joe elaborated further in another post that he isn't particularly fond of the second animation test, but he still thought it was legit. Users urged him to ask Rust about the animation, which leads to usual Joe Cracker rambling that gave us no new info. On the 4th, Joe posted an update from Grust. Grust was now threatening to cancel the film if Joe continued to badmouth the animation on IGN. On the 8th, Joe relayed another message from Grust reading, I will be very displeased with you, more so than I already am, if your current IGN thread gets locked again. Looks like IGN is great for advertising to or I mean Grust. But lo and behold, the last post happened on the 9th and the thread got locked. <laughs> The archive of the discussion went entirely silent for months, but discussion on TLOC began again on October 14th, 2005. The opening post by Joe seemed to reveal that Joe's belief that he was actually talking to John Grust all along was crushed, with Joe saying, From fake producers to unforeseen family loss, I just found out that someone is really, this time, trying to take TLOC away from me. I am not naming names. The man making this test animation screenshots says that because he thinks he can do whatever he wants, he is threatening to take it away from me. I am saying this here because the man doing this claims to be a member of this forum. I know you out there and you need to stop while you're ahead. Joe's stressful post was met with excitement that the man being a loco on these forums for over two years has now returned. Celius returned to the thread to inform Joe another animation was coming and even added in some details that he offered to let Joe do a line, but Joe fucked it up. He then told readers this project is a collaborative effort between him, Sexual Burger King, TLOC underscore fan, Sir Louis, and Ork or Ork. Joe finally figured out what was going on. It took two years and people admitting it openly to his face, but he got it. Celius then shared an email exchange between Joe and him about the one line they asked him to record, but failed, and his response in all caps read, You better watch it, cause if you try to take anything from me, I swear to God, I will come after you like a hurricane. You understand me? I will own you. Literally. If you don't want to get sued, you better lay off. Joe responded angrily to Celius posting this and revealed the email that caused him to type all caps. Celius wrote, Screw you, Joe. Those lines were terrible, and you never sent the right one. We're doing it without you, and you can kiss our collective asses. We're not even going to mention you when we talk to the film studio. You've contributed nothing. Now go away. And with that, Joe had apparently lawyered up. And get this, his lawyer's name? Greasy Beaver. The animosity between Joe and the animation team died down over the next few days. After some calmer back and forth, the animation team began to pressure Joe, so during this time, to make a new trailer to restore faith in him. Joe then asked for CGI footage from the third movie to make a trailer and music. Joe can't do anything himself. Celius refused to help him, but an undeterred Joe released a new trailer on the 27th. The link was not properly archived, but it was probably crap and received criticism that he just used the creation of the animation team from previous tests. The thread got locked on November 15th. A new thread was made the very next day, in which Joe was very supportive of the people working on his test animation. The reaction was mostly positive, with some newcomers coming in. Celius tells the readers that the next animation will hopefully be out by the end of the year, a promise he sadly couldn't keep. November carried on with sarcastic support of Joe, attaching a tagline, The Legend of Zelda is more than just a game. It tagline that Joe himself wrote for his fans. More fan art was posted. Interestingly, and sadly not archived, a man going by the name Nick Shorts posted his own flash animations of The Light of Courage. Joe very much liked these. Things don't change much till December 5th. Joe, and it's probably Joe, posted on the 5th under a different username, Ultimate Bad Boys. He does not specify why, but he probably got banned for doing a censored F-bomb in a previous post. IGN is family friendly, kiddos. He gets unbanned on the 7th. Happy days.
The next major news occurs December 14, 2005. A TLOC fan site went live for the first time under the URL dancingtriforce.com. I could not find an archive of this site, but judging by posts, Joe was not happy, especially because it had a video of him with the word idiot flashing over it. I could download the video, however. It's gonna be hard to prove without evidence. It's gonna be hard to prove without evidence. It's gonna be hard to prove without evidence. December 15th, we get a big update from Sexual Burger King. Burger tells readers they had wanted it done by the 15th, but they were unable to. So they then released an amazing new movie poster seen on screen. On December 19th, Joe finally realizes that Greasy Bieber isn't a lawyer and he fired him. One's bitten twice shy, you stupid December came to an end. There were more fan works made and songs, but with the end of 2005 and the beginning of 2006, there was no posting of the new Zelda installment. On January 3rd, 2006, Salias announced that DancingTriforce.com was now fully functional and that it was the official TLOC website. Joe was extremely angry about this, wanting his website to be the official website, to which Salias responds, Hey Cracker, guess what? I want you to pay attention carefully. You rotten landmass. You were not involved with the third animation. You have nothing to do with it, you ugly leech. Joe responded to this in anger, and in all caps wrote, You are not to treat me like a piece of meat! Self-centered, selfish, retarded. Centered was misspelled. On the 9th, Burger tells fans that they will be releasing Joe's script on the official website one scene at a time. The script is now online on various other forums. I will link it below. It is not the worst thing I've ever read. It's bad, but I read this DBZ fanfic by a guy named Akujin. I'll take TLOC over that. There is a scene, however, where Link says the line, Yeah, go salt, be, drink it. Still better than that DBZ fanfic. Joe was extremely mad about them releasing his script and tells Berger to check his email on the matters. This was met with mockery. Joe was very upset at this point and requested for the thread to be pulled on the 12th and lo and behold, it was locked that very day. A new thread was started on the 15th. Joe tells readers he and Orc have come to a compromise and she won't be posting his script to the website, a promise that was not upheld. The animation trio proceeded to mock Joe and threatened to post his poorly made film titled Unknown Creatures on their site. Arguing in Ensues. Very little in this thread discussed the actual Zelda animation. Because Zelda was not actually being discussed in the thread, it was locked on the 26th. Joe started a new thread on February 5th with only one post which reads, If you are wondering why I have not posted a new TLOC thread here on IGM.com, it's because doing so has always caused me nothing but problems with those who run DancingTriforce.com who say that they are the official TLOC website. Bullshit. This is the official TLOC website. Right Right here. He links his own website. DancingTriforce.com must do as I have just ordered them to do before I even think about posting a new TLOC thread here on IGN.com. Joe only stays gone for one day. He posted a new thread with a link to his website and to another fan site, Light of Cracker, saying, What's up, players? You can only stay away for a while, but you have to do what you got to do. As long as demand is always high, a fresh start will always come. The reception to this is one of annoyance. Joe himself also adds, in that he wants his script taken down, which shows readers that Orc did not comply with their private agreement. Celius responded to this demand by assuring the fans that the new animation will be up after he gets off of work. Can two and a half years of exceptionalism finally get an amazing conclusion? No, the thread got locked on the 8th. It's gonna be hard to think about evidence. 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 On May 2nd, 2006, Joe posted a new thread stating, Mr. J-O-E Cracker is here and well as a light of courage. I know my fans are still out there, so if you're getting this, you're not getting any access denied. Bull. Asterix. So now it's back to business. Celius responds with an update on part 3, stating the progress is going great. On the 3rd, Burger tells readers they are a few days away for part 3 to be released. Hopefully, they didn't tease us again. Small updates happen over the next several days. People are eagerly demanding the next part over and over. The hype was swelling. On the 20th, Celius posted a new update that they wanted the animation done by Sunday, but doesn't make any promises. The tease game is real. Days pass with no new updates updates. And finally, 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 the announcement of its completion was announced 
finally, on the 29th, posting download links on DancingTriForce.com. With the link, Berger also writes, Celius, or Quayox, and myself started this thing near the end of 2005, and after many months of diligence, determination, and excessive procrastination, the wait is finally over. TLOC3 is not only the best animation ever made from a Joe Cracker screenplay, but it's also the last. With this animation, TLOC will certainly go out with a bang, one that we hope all of you find highly entertaining. So this animation is much longer than the other two, at over six minutes. I encourage viewers to watch it in its entirety. All parts will be linked below, but I'll give a brief summary. Here's a timestamp if you don't want spoilers. Part 3 animates the final climax of all the Light of Courage script, where Link and Zelda face off against Ganon in Majora's Mask. The animation is beautiful. We have the whiny, voiced, googly-eyed Link. Well, he have two Triforces, while Ganon and Majora's Mask still have one. The flat-voiced Zelda. This isn't the Triforce of Wisdom, but it's something. It also has two poorly animated stop-motion sequences. Ganon wearing a variety of moo's that change scene to scene, which it then rips off later to show a naked Ganon. But you're to destroy us all, including yourself! It also has inspirational quotes. This is a time, this is a time for which a hero must succeed. Failure is not a choice. And it ends beautifully, with the heroes saving the day, and a perfectly timed wonk eye. <laughs> Goodbye, Ganon. It ends with credits to the crew we have been following for almost three years now, and one final insult to Joe Cracker. In the credits, they put a light beam to cover up Joe's name for the writer. The reaction was all initially positive. One user stating, breathtaking. It was emotionally powerful, to say the least. That emotion, pure joy. Ganon was truly kick-ass. I think this officially puts to bed the boxers or briefs argument. What was Joe's response? Was he mad his dream was turned into a joke? No, quite the contrary. Joe writes, amazing. I don't know how you got all those figurines, but if then, I'd like to buy one. God help me, thumbs up. With that concluded our story. Joe continued to be annoying about his TLOC script for years to come, trying to join other Zelda movie attempts, but not with any luck. Now I saw a comment on the YouTube upload of the third part, stating that in an alternate universe, Joe might have had attention like famed lolcal Chris Chan, but to be honest, there is a reason why he did not reach that level. Joe is stupid. Joe tried to piggy off of copyrighted material just like Chris Chan. Joe melted down publicly on multiple occasions just like Chris Chan, but at the end of the day, he took everything fairly well. This isn't a story to bash a guy who probably had some kind of mental disability. This is a story about how three people trolled one very dumb man online for three years and made three amazing shitpost animations. That took a lot of time, effort, and love. Joe, despite being demanding and stupid, is not a bad person. The animation crew are not bad people. This is just simple internet lore. This is the story of the Light of Courage. If you like this content, uh, subscribe. You can follow me on social media. I make videos on internet lore. Uh, my name is Cecil McFly. Um, cut. Bye. I saw like something like a dark image in the mist, but I couldn't really make out nothing. It just disappeared.